Hello everyone, welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you news from the Ridgecrest Police Department, news from the Kern County Sheriff's Department, today's KZGN Talking Points editorial, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitenick. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. In local news, this morning the Ridgecrest Police Department responded to a shooting call in the 200 block of South Silver Ridge. Officers responded to the call and found one man with multiple gunshot wounds. The only information we have so far is that it was some form of dispute between two men. As of news time, we only know that the man was transported to Ridgecrest Regional Hospital with serious wounds. The police are on scene and doing an investigation. We'll bring you more details when we get them. The suspect has been identified as Pedro Ortiz. He is considered armed and dangerous. He's a Hispanic male, 5'10", 185 pounds. Anyone with information, contact the Ridgecrest Police Department at 760-499-5100. Here's an update from the Kern County Sheriff's Department. The manhunt for the suspect involved in the recent kidnapping and murders still going on. I drove by the mobile command post yesterday afternoon. It is right on Route 178 by Kelso Valley. It was a real mass of activity. The Kern County Sheriff's Office would like to remind the public of an emergency closure issued by the U.S. Forest Service. The U.S. Forest Service has issued an emergency closure order. All Forest Service land in the Paiute Mountains, including trails and roads leading into the Paiute Mountains, are closed until further notice. Additionally, the Pacific Crest Trail is closed from Highway 58 north to Bird Springs Pass until further notice. The Sheriff's Office is continuing the search efforts in the area of Kelso Valley Road and Jawbone Canyon Road, attempting to locate a suspect wanted for kidnapping, murder, and a shooting involved Sheriff's Office SWAT deputies. The Sheriff's Office is advising people who live in the area or may be traveling to the area to avoid the Paiute Mountains and the Pacific Crest Trail, as the search area will be continuing as it goes on. Now is a story from KZGN TV field reporter Tanya Pyle. The time is now to get your children up to date vaccinations before they go back to school. The California Department of Public Health Director and S State Health Officer Dr. Karen Smith reminds parents to make sure that their children are up to date on required vaccinations before the school year begins. Parents should put vaccinations on their back to school checklist, Dr. Smith said. Vaccinations are the best way to ensure that students are protected and to stop the spread of measles and other serious diseases. Children are required to have received certain vaccinations in order to attend school or child care in California. Dr. Smith urges parents to make an appointment now with their health care provider to help protect themselves and their families. Cost should not be a barrier to childhood vaccinations. If health insurance does not cover the recommended vaccinations, children may qualify for free vaccinations under the National Vaccines for Children program. On June 30th this year, Governor Brown signed a law, Senate Bill 277, which does not change procedures for the fall of 2015. Under this new law, only medical exemptions to required immunizations will be allowed for students entering schools after January 1st of 2016. To learn more about the law and the immunizations required for child care and schools, visit the website shotsforschool.org or talk to your doctor or local health department for more information. The Ridgecrest Police Department has been awarded a grant exceeding $39,000 from the California Department of Alcohol, Beverage, and Control. This grant is administered through the Grant Assistance Program and runs from July of this year through June of next year. Silver Area Law Enforcement Agencies will be participating in grant activities and operations as well. Consumption of alcoholic beverages by persons under 21 years of age is heavily associated with crimes such as driving under the influence, batteries, sexual assaults, and other alcohol-related incidents. The Ridgecrest Police Department has identified four main methods in which uh, offending minors obtain alcohol. Minors purchase alcohol from off-sale establishments. They have a shoulder tap adult purchases alcohol from minor or at near off-site es establishments. Another minor or adult gives alcohol to a minor. The minor steals the alcohol. The Ridgecrest Police Department, with assistance from ABC, will be conducting several operations as well as public and business education to reduce minor access to alcohol. 
The activities include LEAD, which stands for Licensee Education in Alcohol and Drugs. The LEAD program is a free voluntary prevention and education program for retail licensees, their employees, and applicants. Its mission is to provide high quality, effective, and educationally sound training on alcohol responsibility and the law. The, curric the curriculum is designed for licensees, managers, and employees. Another program, IMPACT, stands for Informed Merchants Preventing Alcohol-Related Crime Tendencies. The IMPACT program is a prevention and education program. Its main objective is to teach licensees how they can help reduce alcohol-related crime. It is designed as a crime prevention approach in our lax atmosphere of cooperation between merchants and law enforcement officers. During an impact inspection, officers remind licensees of the responsibilities and accountability associated with the sale of alcohol. The officers also inspect license premises for compliance with state and local laws. If a licensee is not in compliance, the officers will tell the licensee or employer on duty or the employee on duty what issues need to be addressed and provide copies of any laws or rules. Licensees must correct any problems. Later, officers will conduct follow-up visits. The minor decoy of this program allows law enforcement agencies to use persons under 20 years of age as decoys for the purpose of purchasing alcohol beverages from licensed premises. The use of underage decoys to check whether licensees are selling alcohol to minors can show a dramatic drop in the illegal activity. Any person who sells alcohol to the minor decoy is arrested for selling alcohol to a minor. Shoulder tap is a common method used by persons under age 21 to solicit a person to purchase and furnish them with alcoholic beverages. The Shoulder Tap program is an enforcement program that ABC and local law enforcement agencies use to detect and defer, deter shoulder tap activity. During the program, a minor decoy solicits adult outside licensed stores to buy minor alcohol. Any person seen furnishing alcohol to the minor decoy is arrested for furnishing alcohol to a minor. Other operations such as juvenile party patrols, fair patrols, and retail operating standards task force may also be conducted to address specific problems. The Rift Crest Police Department, allied agencies, and ABC believe that aggressive enforcement mixed with public education will successfully limit the access of alcohol to minors and improve the quality of life in Rift Crest. Stay tuned for our Rift Crest Animal Shelter news when we come back. Welcome back. Now here's a reminder from the Ridgecrest Animal Shelter. They want to make sure everyone knows about their current adoption special offer. Adoption fees for cats and dogs at the Ridgecrest Animal Shelter are greatly reduced. Cats and kittens, and boy do they have kittens, are free. Yeah, they are free. And dogs are $45 while funds last. This includes all costs. It includes spay or neuter, current vaccinations, a microchip, a license for dogs, and a health exam. This is a fantastic offer. If you've been thinking about adding a new family member, this is a great way to do it. Adoption application must be approved. This is sponsored by the Indian Wells Valley Humane Society. Go out to the Rich Coast Animal Shelter out on County Line Road. They're open five days per week, Tuesday through Saturday. Now it's time for the 67th KZGN News Talking Points editorial. Here's today's topic. What did you think about Congressman McCarthy's visit last week? And where were the city council members? But first, here's some response to last Thursday's editorial titled, Do You Support the 25 Mile Hour Speed Limit on China Lake Boulevard in the Construction Zones? A quick recap is that the reduced speed limit is for two main purposes. First, it helps protect the workers that are out on the road doing the work. The second reason for the reduced speed is to be in effect even when the workers are not present is due to the actual construction. Oftentimes, the construction area is left in what could be described as a dangerous condition. Here's a couple comments we, we received. Susie wrote, yes, I support it, as is for the safety of the workers. I just wish RPD would issue more tickets instead of warnings to get the point across. Fran wrote, I am tired of their taking so long getting this project done. It has been months. They need to finish this now before doing another place. 25 miles an hour is too slow. Those comments echo what I hear from most people on the street as well. They are sick and tired of how long this project is taking. 
is generally not the 25 mile an hour speed limit that people dislike. It's the seemingly endless construction. Now on today's editorial topic, what did you think of Congressman McCarthy's visit and where were the city council members? Well, as you saw from last week's TV coverage, I had a chance to interview him while he was at the Chamber of Commerce luncheon. This was a well-attended lunch. The room was packed and people were even turned away that didn't have reservations. I heard that he spent the morning meeting with the base management. That was an important stop. What was notable at the lunch was that the attendees were all the usual movers and shakers of the city. This included Mayor Breeden, Sierra Sands Superintendent Ernie Bell, Water District Board members, and many other people including a lot of business people and even some members of the public. But the part also interesting was the absence of our city council members. And actually, I didn't realize it until I read this morning's Daily Independent. No Ridgecrest City Council members were in attendance. I wonder where they were. There was no requirement for them to attend, of course, but it seems like for them to take the opportunity to meet with the congressman and all the members of the community would be taken advantage of. And speaking of their attendance for this lunch, or lack thereof, I have a request for the mayor and the council. It concerns your attendance at city council meetings. Since I attend almost every council meeting, I've noticed quite a few meetings where the full council wasn't there. However, there is seldom an announcement as to why they weren't there. Since you work for us, when you are not attending a council meeting, we the people deserve the respect for you to report to us why you have missed a meeting. Oftentimes, council meetings are started with one, someone missing yet seldom is an explanation ever offered. When elected to your position, we all expect you to be there. I remember when I served, I scheduled every vacation around the meetings, so I didn't miss any. I never missed even one meeting in four years. However, I don't expect everyone to do the same. I know things that can come up may affect your attendance. There can be emergencies or illnesses that stop you, and that's okay, it really is. However, we the people deserve to know the reason you're not at a meeting. A simple statement from the mayor or acting mayor as to who isn't attending and why would be appropriate. This is not for criticism for the absence, it's for transparency and respect for the office and those that you serve. You are not above accounting for your absence. Heck, there are records that track even every elected official attendance at state and federal level sessions. I recognize that they seldom report why they weren't there, however, if you called their office and asked, they would usually have an answer where the representative was. As far as the council goes, let's even say their absence was private and personal in nature. Well, then just say that. Just say, I had to miss a meeting for personal reasons. That's it. We aren't looking for dirt, just accountability. Recently, Mayor Pro Tem Sanders missed a series of meetings. When he came back, he thanked the council for covering for him while he was absent, but not a word to us as to why he was absent. He has to realize that while he was gone, the town lost his perspective and influence of the issues the council had before them. We deserve to know why you were not in attendance at a meeting you were expected to be at. You work for us. Show us respect and let us know why you're not able to attend a meeting. Anyway, back to the McCarthy visit. He calls Ridgecrest a second home, and the fact that he took the time to talk to every person at lunch says much about him. I watched him as he went through the group and it was a big group of people. He talked to anyone that wanted to talk. I know there are some liberals that don't like him or even despise him. That's your right. However, I asked them this question. When was the last time Feinstein or Boxer came here and spent any time talking to the regular folks in Ridgecrest? I could be wrong, and I would accept anyone's correction of me if I'm wrong, but in the dozens of years they both have been in office, I think I can only remember one time that one of them rolled into to the base visit for years ago, and I can't remember which of them it was. When it happened, there was little or no contact with the regular folks in Ridgecrest. In conclusion, thanks goes to Congressman McCarthy for stopping by and visiting with the people here, and to the City Council. How about being a little more forthcoming in your attendance at Council meetings? I'm Tom Wittick, and that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. If you have any comments about this editorial or would like to discuss or recommend a topic, I'd like to hear from you. Please email them to info at kzgn.net. Stay tuned for weather and sports when we come back.
Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, hot weather will persist in parts of the southern U.S. and Gulf Coast, but some relief in temperatures will be felt compared to yesterday. The combination of high temperatures and humidity will result in heat index values as high as 110 degrees for some locations. Heat advisories are in effect from Texas to Mississippi. Temperatures across the nation. Carolinas came in at 81, Georgia 82, Arkansas 89, North Texas 78, Colorado 71, Arizona 90, and Los Angeles at 67. And for our forecast here in the IWV, tonight will be mostly clear with a low around 69, south wind 5 to 10 miles per hour with gusts as high as 15. Wednesday will be mostly sunny and hot with a high near 101, south-southwest wind 5 miles per hour. Wednesday night, partly cloudy with a low around 72, west wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday, mostly sunny and hot with a high near 103, west wind around 5 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy with a low around 73, west wind 5 to 15 miles per hour with gusts as high as 20. And on Friday, sunny and hot again with a high near 104, west wind 5 miles per hour. And as a look at your forecast, now back to Tom and the rest of the KZGN News. Thanks, Keith. Now let's go to Tom Heck with sports. And a very pleasant Tuesday afternoon to everyone. Let's start with Major League Baseball. The Angels and Dodgers both lost last night on Monday night. The Dodgers lose at home to Washington. In fact, Washington had a great offensive show. The Nationals are struggling. The Nationals two games out of first place now. They trail the Mets in the East. And likely the wild card team, one of them, is not going to come from the East. So that means that either the Mets or the Nationals need to win the league flat out, or one of those teams will stay at home after having a pretty good year. The Mets right now might be the hottest team of all in Major League Baseball. All right, the Dodgers again will play game two of their three-game series tonight in Los Angeles against the Washington Nationals. Gio Gonzalez last night pitched for Washington, did a very good job, struck out nine, only allowed uh, the one run, and very, very good control. So Gonzalez, he starts getting hot. He is a very good right-handed pitcher with a lot of movement on his fastball. Also has a lot of pitches that he can mix up. All right, let's talk about the Angels. They dropped last night a game in Chicago. The Angels won two out of three this weekend in Baltimore. Now the Angels find themselves one game out of first place behind the Astros. The Astros, however, are really not playing very good. They lost all three games this past weekend in Oakland. Tonight they'll cross over the Bay and they will play the San Francisco Giants who are also struggling. The Giants lost all four games in Chicago last week. Boy, the Giants act like they don't want to win the West. The Dodgers right now have lost four straight. They were swept in Pittsburgh, then losing last night. So somebody's got to get hot. Luckily for the Dodgers and the Giants, there's nobody else in the National League West that's really done anything. All right, let's talk about a sad note. Frank Gifford, who was a fixture of Monday Night Football, getting it going, making it what it was. And I remember growing up with Monday Night Football, Frank Gifford played for the New York Giants, he played for 12 years in the NFL. He was part of the 1956 championship team. He was named the game's MVP, a great type running quarterback who could both throw the ball and run the football. Also a guy that could take a lot of hits, but will best be remembered probably by this generation for Monday Night Football. For many years it was Dandy Don Meredith, Howard Cosell, and Frank Gifford. He went from 1970 all the way until 1997 on Monday night. He'll long be remembered for his unselfishness and a guy that really stayed in the limelight of being just a good guy. All right, let's talk about Buddy Baker. Buddy Baker, a NASCAR champion. Buddy Baker named to one of the top 50 all-time NASCAR writers. Passed away yesterday. Buddy Baker was referred to as a gentle giant. He was six foot six, always had time to sign autographs, and um, remembered by the other drivers as truly a gentleman of the sport. Also won the famed 1990 Daytona 500. Buddy Baker passes away yesterday from NASCAR. All right, you're going to be hearing rumors and more rumors. What's going to happen with the San Diego Chargers? We'll find out as the days go. 
NFL owners meeting today in Chicago. They're going to talk about the teams that want to possibly play in Los Angeles. They're going to hear from a couple cities in the LA area, Carson and Inglewood notably, and those teams are going to try to covet a brand new stadium to try to lure at least two teams in, namely the Chargers and the Raiders, but there's a chance the Rams also from St. Louis might move. So stay tuned. I'm not sure we want the Rams, the Chargers. I hate to see them leave San Diego. But what's ironic is all three of those teams at one time or the other all played in Los Angeles. Well, that's True Sports for this Tuesday. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. So that's the news for today. Office of KZGN TV, no, you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Coming up next, Ridgecrest Talk.